Thank you, Madam Speaker. Today's rule covers several major items. The first that I will discuss, H.R. 7900, the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2023, is uh, of the greatest importance to the nation and to the world. For 61 years in a row, the NDAA has become law. As I reminded my colleagues in the Rules Committee yesterday, this record of achievement has only been possible because of the immense cooperation from both sides of the aisle and is a testament to what we can accomplish when we focus on our shared goals as a nation. Working together, Democrats and Republicans on the Armed Services Committee produced a bipartisan product. I applaud Chairman Smith, Ranking Member Rogers, and all the members of the Armed Services Committee for their efforts. Madam Speaker, it's no secret that the world has become a more dangerous place in recent years. Last year saw the Taliban, a corrupt and militant organization known for supporting and providing sanctuary to terrorists, complete its takeover of Afghanistan. Earlier this year, the world was shocked by Vladimir Putin's brazen, unprovoked, and indeed outright criminal invasion of Ukraine, Russia's democratic neighbor to the West. Communist China continues its history of aggression in Asia and the Pacific Rim, including increasingly aggressive acts toward Taiwan. North Korea has continued an aggressive posturing toward the United States and our democratic allies in Asia. And Iran continues its long march toward becoming a nuclear state. It's more important than ever that Congress speaks with one voice when it comes to setting our national defense policy and funding priorities each year so that we can ensure we counter aggressive actors and offer our allies the support they need to protect themselves. One of the most important things accomplished in this year's NDAA is actually what it did not do. For the second year in a row, the Armed Services Committee rejected President Biden's proposed defense budget number and authorized a better, higher number to ensure that our national defense is properly funded. Indeed, President Biden's first two budget proposals uh, look to, uh, set to continue the chronic underfunding of the Obama-Biden years, during which time our military readiness declined and our rivals on the international stage were empowered. The increased funding in this bill will go a long way toward ensuring that America's military is ready to confront any challenge. And it will ensure that our armed services personnel receive a 4.6 percent pay raise, the largest in history, with additional pay bonuses to personnel who make the least to offset the inflation caused by this administration's policies. On the whole, I'm proud to support this legislation, and I encourage the entire House to support this measure and send it on to the Senate. Our second item in the House is S-3373, the Honoring Our Pact Act. While this bill has gone through a frustratingly long process to get to this point, I believe we failed to provide uh, uh, our nation's toxic exposed veterans with the care that they need for far too long. I will be the first to admit that this bill is not perfect. I share the concerns of many about the use of mandatory spending in this bill. But given the importance of this issue to veterans nationwide and to those in my own district, I cannot let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Imperfect though it is, this bill does take important strides forward, and I plan to support it on final passage.